Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Kickball Podcast. I'll be your host, Colin Freeman, for this episode. In this episode, I spoke to Jose Carrera Garcia of Central Valley Fuego in the USL League One. Jose was also a standout player at Cal throughout his career in college and had stints in Mexico as well as in the USL Championship with Las Vegas Lights as well as, as, well as with Chattanooga Red Wolves in USL League One where he won many accolades and helped them make many deep runs in the playoffs. Jose had a very decorated career throughout U.S. soccer, has a very interesting pathway as he's also born in Mexico. So this was a really good interview, a lot of really good content in this interview. Really enjoyed speaking to Jose about his journey. We start off by talking about what expectations are going into the season with Central Valley Fuego, with Jermaine Jones as their new incoming head coach. So that's where I'll leave you off from here. You know, I kind of wanted to talk about, you know, you're going into your second year here with Central Valley Fuego. So what are kind of the expectations here for you going into this season? Um, you know, for me individually, um, I think last year was a really tough season coming from, you know, the previous season, you know, making it to the to the final and me on a personal level, I was a first team selection. So um, last year was a little bit tough for me. So for me individually, it's to, you know, get back into all league selection, you know, I think to get back into being one of the best midfielders in the league. And as a team, um, our first step is, you know, making the playoffs. You know, after having a tough season, we want to make playoffs. You know, um, Fresno is a very it, – the city's full of soccer. You know, people love soccer there. So I think we owe a lot to the city and the fans. Um, so I think making playoffs is the first step. Um, I think with the team that, you know, Coach Jermaine Jones and, you know, the rest of his staff have put together, I think we'll – compete in the first spots uh, with my honest opinion and you know I think this team could potentially you know surprise a lot of people yeah definitely and, you know I think you made a good point there touching on that you know your prior experience I'm sure it was difficult you know to have a season like that especially coming off you know ex- your experiences you had in Chattanooga and you know, made a good point there at the end about talking about Jermaine Jones obviously an extremely successful playing career himself what does that kind of mean to you to get an opportunity to play for somebody who had such a good professional career here in the U.S. and is such a well-known name here in the U.S. and throughout the world? Yeah, it's exciting. You know, I think it's exciting for the entire club. But for me as well, you know, he was a midfielder. I think he was a different different type of midfielder than I was. Um, but, you know, speaking with him and what his goals are and the way he wants his coaching philosophy – uh, it's exciting, you know, because it fits with everything that I am as a player. So I'm, I'm ready to, you know, soak in all the experience he has, you know, all the everything that he has to teach us. I'm, I'm very excited because I know, um, I know he's gonna teach us a lot with his experiences, and I'm sure, you know, even though he doesn't have, like, you know, as many people say that experience as a coach, he was a top player and playing, you know, in the best league. So I think he's gonna benefit a lot of us players, and he's gonna get the best of us for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you make a fantastic point there, you know, for yourself and the way your game is. I think it's a it's a great influence and a great great honor to, to learn somebody like Jermaine. And obviously Jermaine's had a really successful playing career, so I'm sure you can learn a lot. You know, moving backwards here, I kinda wanted to start off, you know, from the start, you know, your career. I know you you grew up in Mexico and then eventually immigrated to the US and obviously spent a lot of your youth career in the US. But if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, your childhood growing up and your youth career as a player, that'd be great. Yeah, I um, I grew. I I was born in Mexico. I, you know, my parents brought me to the U.S. when I was about six years old. Um, growing up, I played uh club soccer for uh Arsenal, at the time was you know one of the bigger clubs, and then I still played at academy for Arsenal. Um, uh, during my junior year, I committed to play soccer at uh UC Berkeley, so I was there for four years. Um, and then after that, um, I had problems since I was, you know, I'm considered an international in any league in the U.S., even though I spent pretty much my entire life in the U.S., I'm considered an international. So, you know, I went to the combine, I went to the draft, um, you know, I was supposed to get drafted 21st overall by Toronto. Um, I had uh, with my work permit at the time I was under DACA. Um, at the time I was under DACA, so at the time President Trump, who was in in, uh, decided to pause DACA for a while, so I couldn't renew my work permit for almost a year. 
So, um, you know, I kind of got stuck there and that's how I decided, you know, to kind of leave the country. I went on a trial in Germany, uh, but then, you know, Celaya from Mexico's second division, which is like USL championship here, uh, offered me a contract and I couldn't pass on that. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, that's, you give a great leeway there. And obviously the next chapter of your career, you know, focusing a little bit on your time Arsenal, at Arsenal and obviously your experience growing up. I know you had a lot of success for Arsenal growing up. You know, you were highly regarded as a prospect, but, you know, like you said, you spent most of your time at that club. And, you know, how do you think that club kind of helped develop you? And obviously having that influence of Southern California, you know, how do you think that kind of helped you grow and influence as a player? Obviously, I know there's a very big Hispanic influence of the game in Southern California. So what was that influence for you kind of like growing up? Um, It was big, you know, I think our, you know, the, Arsenal was big from like, you know, 1990 to 1995, that age group. You know, you have a lot of pros, a lot of really good players, and that's when Arsenal had their top teams. Um, so for me, it helped me a lot. You know, I was surrounded by really good players. We had older players that were, you know, great example for us that were really, really talented. You know, we had people like, you know, Roman Diola, who was a year older than me, who at the time was probably the, one of the best youth soccer players in the whole U.S. Um, so, you know, they loved Hispanic players. And, you know, I played for Steve Lucy. Um, so for me, it was great. You know, um, my last two years, uh, Paul Riola and I played together and that, you know, we, we've built a great partnership, a great friendship. And, um, you know, just having people that want to be successful around you at a young age is, you know, kind of drives you to that. And, you know, we obviously pick different paths and uh, I had a great time at, at Berkeley, you know, uh, coach Grimes used to love recruiting from Southern California and especially Arsenal at the time. So I was lucky enough to get recruited by him. And then that's how I, I ended up at Berkeley. Yeah, definitely a good point. I think you make a lot of good points there about, you know, kind of Arsenal's background as well as, yeah, interesting point there about Paul Ariola. I didn't know that. So I think that's a really good, cool point. And, you know, something else I want to touch on is obviously, you know, your heritage and what your kind of career, your life was like growing up, obviously coming from, you know, parents who were from Mexico and had you born in Mexico. What was their kind of influence on your life growing up as a soccer player? Was it a big influence in your household? Uh, no, actually, no one in my household played soccer. You know, um, my parents worked a lot. Uh, they used to work double shifts pretty much when I was younger. Um, so for me, it was just kind of their worth ethic was the only thing that kind of influenced me. Uh, so, you know, for me, I wanted to be a pro soccer player since I think the age of like nine, 10 that I realized I was pretty good. Um, so just that, you know, their worth that they, they were always supportive, even though, you know, they were always working. They made sure I they could help with anything I needed. So in terms of, you know, um, them they they didn't really know anything about the sport so it was more that i picked it out on my own uh playing with friends at school um but other than that they you know were always supportive since day, since day one they gave me everything i needed and you know thanks to them i'm where i'm at now yeah definitely i mean i think you make some fantastic points there and i think it's extremely interesting that you know it didn't play such a role in your household yet you know obviously it's played such a big role in your life and you know you touch so much upon there about you know, their work ethic, you know, how they're working double shifts and how it really inspired you to push on, you know, throughout your life, obviously, you mentioned it, it was one of your biggest influences, but, you know, have seeing people around you that are working so hard, you know, you mentioned, obviously, the people you had around you at Arsenal, but also, you know, your parents, how much of that do you think inspired you, you know, keep pushing maybe in those tough moments growing up, or, you know, even later on in your career, when obviously things didn't break that well for you, just having these people who work so hard around you from such a young age, how much did that inspire you? Um, yeah, I think that's, you know, the number one thing that always inspires everyone, not just myself, you know, um, just seeing how hard they worked to give me everything I needed was very inspirational to me. Um, obviously I love the game, so I, you know, love being around it 24 seven, um, having friends that were successful and, you know, even older players at Arsenal and that were successful always, you know, motivated me to get there. You know, for some people it's easier and they have better you know, they ended up at other places. For me, it was a little bit tougher. And, you know, I'm just happy I'm still playing the game and, and enjoying it. But uh, the the biggest thing was it was I always wanted to be a pro since at a young age, you know. So for me, it was all soccer. 
Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I think, again, you make fantastic points there. How, you know, how about you obviously had that a passion for soccer from such a young age and, you know, use those influences around you, like you said, the work ethic and everything like that to get to where you are. And, you know, I want to talk about your next chapter of your career, your time at Cal. Obviously, I know you were extremely successful and you're, you know, four years playing there, you started all but one game. But, you know, that first year you redshirt, you know, what was that experience kind of like for you about, you know, the first time you weren't playing and, you know, having that time to develop and kind of getting used to the college game. Was it a tough experience for you or did you look back upon and now think it was something that definitely propelled your career on? Um, yeah, that was definitely very, very tough because, you know, I didn't retro ret by choice or neither did, you know, uh, Coach Grimes decided to redshirt me. I actually, you know, um, uh, I was redoing some high school classes um, at the time online to you know just to make sure i had the the gpa needed to get into cal and then um for some reason ncaa like i was like maybe like two weeks before season started um uh restricted me from being part of the team while they were investigating some some other issue and it happened that you know uh, i think some football players from the same school district high school district that i was in that were take or that were taking the same online courses, they got caught with their you know football coach giving them you know, giving them test um the questions and everything and all that. So it was a huge mess, you know. So NCAA didn't accept those courses, so um I was ineligible for you know for a year, I was ineligible. I couldn't I couldn't play. So it was tough because you know it was things out of my control, things out of you know the university's control. It was you know a decision that NCAA made. So it was tough in that aspect. And it was also tough because that year we were really, really good. Uh, you know, I think we were number one in the nation almost all year. We lost Elite Eight. Um, we had some really good players, you know, Steve Birnbaum and Christian Dean went in first and second overall. I think we had like four or five players drafted. And, you know, at the time I was playing at the 10 and out of – everyone in that roster, that's the position that was very inconsistent all year. So I think it would have been a chance for me to make a huge impact that year as a freshman. So that was tough, you know, just because, you know, obviously I was happy for, for my teammates at the time and for the, for the, for the team, how successful we were. But for me, like I wanted to be there and seeing how successful they were, it, it kind of, you know, it sucked. It sucked because, you know, you did everything right to prepare to get there and then things out of your control you know, you couldn't be there. So, you know, there was times where I wanted a job at a school because, you know, the only reason I went there was to play soccer. You know, um, I I went to play, play soccer, but like I said, my parents were a big help. They, they you know, him, them and Coach Grimes always pushed me to stay there and saying, you know, things have been for a reason. And, you know, they do, they do, you know, that made me, they made, that made me stronger. And, you know, I appreciated all that and then you know I still had four great years you know the following year we lost sweet 16 I had a great year and yeah you know for me I I, I enjoyed it I enjoyed it and all that registering that first year definitely made me a, a better player like on the psychological part yeah definitely you know, I think you make a fantastic point there about you know kind of having those obstacles and you know especially overcoming it it makes you so much more mentally stronger. And I think that's a fantastic point there. And, you know, obviously you had a very successful college career yourself. You know, you look at the accolades, the game started, the goals and assists, everything like that. But, you know, I think you definitely grew into the college game over the course of your time in terms of awards and you could even argue stats. So, you know, what was kind of that process like for you in terms of growing as a player? You know, obviously the college game is a different system than probably what you were growing up with, but also kind of just adjusting and getting more accustomed to the college game as your career pro progressed on in college? Yeah, you know, I think we we make a transition from, you know, youth soccer to college soccer. And, you know, um, it's a it's a it's a tough transition. The game's definitely more physical. Um, Pac-12 is probably one of the most competitive leagues, you know, I mean, conferences in the whole NCAA, you know, usually four out of the six teams in the conference make the tournament. They make a big run. So it's full of really good players. And um, for me, Coach Grime and the entire staff that was there, like, they were always great to me. You know, they helped me so much. They they, they never let me cheat on anything. They wanted me to be honest as a player. And, you know, I think that helped a lot, you know, because it, 
sometimes us, you know, Latin players from Southern California, or even any Latin player, we struggle with discipline. We struggle with, you know, the little things that can make you a better player. And, you know, we hate to admit it at the t when, you know, we, we think we're better than everyone at the t when we're younger because, you know, but we realize that once everyone catches up to, you know, it, it takes more than skills. So, so for me, you know, just being disciplined and, you know, um, even being a better student helped a lot. You know, it, I got smarter. I got, you know, I, I read the game better. And every year I think I improved on that, on that, you know, and yeah, like you said, my stats speak for itself. Um, I think I ended third over third in um in the Cal history for assist. You know, I have a few goals, so yeah, I had a very successful career, and I I enjoyed it. Like I said, um, our last year we finished second in Pac-12, and all the credit I give it to you know it's our staff and and the players that we had there. We we had a good thing going on. Yeah, definitely. I think you make some really interesting and really good points. And, you know, something I kind of want to touch on was that discipline aspect and you talking about how, you know, school and, you know, being disciplined in the classroom obviously helped, you know, your understanding of the game, like you said, but also just your overall understanding. You know, I'm curious, as you progressed on in the professional career, do you think that, you know, having to stay disciplined in the classroom and just your overall discipline in all, er in all facets of your life, do you think that really helped you and helped you take those steps in the professional game once your college career ended. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't just help you, you know, in the professional game or on the field. It just helps you as a person, you know, it helps you, you know, making relationships here or there. It just, you become smarter as a person and that, that, you know, as you get older, you value it more, you know, for me, I was a terrible student in high school. I, I didn't know anything about college, you know, um, I, I, when Berkeley came, I didn't know what Berkeley was, you know, after you start learning, you're like, well, like, that's one of the best schools in the world, you know, so uh, I wish I took my high school a little bit more serious, uh, you know, I was a terrible student, I had a, you know, thankfully, I got in with 2.3 to, to Berkeley, you know, it was, you know, Coach Grimes, and then everyone there did a fantastic job helping me get in, so once I got to college, I valued education, you know, I started being a real student, I started, you know, liking school, learning, and, you know, you just become, you become a different person, and that, that helps you on the field and outside of it, so, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people now don't want to go to school, this and that, but it helps you, you know, it, it helps you mature a lot, whether it's on the field or outside of the field. Yeah, definitely, and again, you know, so many fantastic points there about, you know, the values of discipline, and you know, that maturing aspect. And that kind of leads me into obviously the next chapter of your career as well. You know, you talk about the MLS draft cycle. And obviously, I'm sure that was an extremely difficult process at the time. I mean, you had such a successful college career. And, you know, obviously, things completely out of side of your control prevent you from achieving that dream right away. And I'm sure, you know, it was extremely dis difficult. And, you know, it can be extremely fair, but you take such a mature approach to it and obviously continue to pr progress on in your career. But, you know, what was that process kind of like and, you know, not being able to achieve, you know, a childhood dream right away just because of things completely outside of your control? Uh, yeah, that was probably the toughest part of, you know, my entire career. Um, you know, thankfully, I've never had to deal with any bad injuries or anything like that. So for me, you know, first it started with, you know, my freshman year not being able to play. That was tough. But then not being able to get drafted was was tough, you know, because, again, it, it goes to things that are out of my control. You know, I think I every year I proved that, you know, as a player, I got better, you know, more mature and more ready for the league. And, you know, I think my junior and senior year, I was getting invited to a lot of training camps with uh, different MLS teams. So for me, I was excited, you know, because I thought my senior year, I was probably, in my opinion, one of the top three players in Pac-12, just that's why is isn't just, you know, pro ready. So, you know, once the initial list of uh, the combine came out, um, I wasn't on the list, actually. So, you know, like, I called Coach Grimes, like, hey, like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, I'm as confused as you are, you know, um. He was like, you know, we have a list of, you know, who has the most votes from coaches in the league of, you know, to to recommend to go to the combine, this and that. And you're where you were the first one with votes. So he was like, I don't know what's going on. So, you know, like it was since day one, it was already confusing. You know, my agent at the time was like, yeah, like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. And 
you know, there's me with my being a DACA student, which, you know, in the league, you're still considered international. That played a big role, you know, so it was more, I think, teams not knowing whether I was going to have a work permit to be able to get drafted or, you know, just in general, you know, you, you take an international spot. And at the time, that international spot wasn't as big, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was 2017. So it wasn't like that crazy, you know, it was, but, you know, you think about it now and you're like, dude, you're competing with guys that are superstars coming from Europe, wherever it is, you know, so it's a bit unfair, you know, you come to a country, you live here since you're five years old and, you know, not by, by your choice, you know, your parents' choice. And obviously they do it for you to come and have a better better life than what it's offered in whatever country you come from. So, you know, it's tough, you know, in any other, I think in any other country, they'll help you, you know, get your citizenship or whatever. But unfortunately in the, in the U S it doesn't work like that. So yeah, that was tough, man. That was tough because, you know, seeing friends get drafted, seeing players get drafted, you know, where you're like, well, man, like, you know, like not to sound cocky or whatever, but you're like, I was a way better player than this guy and look at him now, you know, so that, that, that's hard to take in, but it makes you stronger down the road for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I commend you for your approach and your attitude to all that. And, you know, I want to touch on this a little bit farther because I think, you know, especially in the, the present day of college soccer, there's a lot of internationals who have a lot of success and, you know, I'm sure it can be extremely difficult for them to watch the draft process and see guys that, you know, go ahead of them, you know, same type of situation you had. And, you know, I'm curious now that you've gone through this, what advice do you have for those guys? Because this is a very common issue, I think, or very common situation you see for a lot of international college soccer players nowadays. Yeah, so, I mean, for college players, um, you know, we're in college and all, everything everyone talks about in college is MLS, you know? And you just got to be realistic. You got to be, no matter how good you are, it's going to be really, really tough to get a first team deal. So, you know, a lot of kids, you know, um, like the other day I was talking to my agent. He has a, a player that got drafted this year. I'm not going to say any names or anything because I just, for I'm using it as an example. And this player is an international. Um, the, the MLS team drafted him and they're like, hey, you're going to be with our second team, you know? This kid's like, no, well, I'm not. I'm not going to go. I still have a year left. I'm going to stay because I just, I, I need a first team contract. I deserve it. How, how, why do you deserve it? What, what have you shown that you deserve it? Yeah. You scored some goals in NCAA, you know, but you know, uh, Kareem Benson was coming and he deserves an international spot too, you know? So why don't you go take that contract, prove yourself, you know, on the second team and, you know, but sometimes a lot of us at at a young age don't think like that. So for me, it's like USL championship, you know, US has grown so much. There's so many teams. Like when I was getting at, when I was in college, it was hard to go, go pro still. There wasn't many teams. Now I think there's like three times more. So, you know, just because you're not getting an MLS contract right, right away, doesn't mean anything, you know, championship is just as good as some teams in, in, um, in MLS and League One's the same, just as good as some teams in championship. And ch even in League One, there's so many good players. You know, the league is very hard. A lot of people take it for granted and they come and they struggle in the league. So, you know, I, I just advise them to, you know, yeah, like it's always great to aim high, but, you know, just because you don't get an MLS deal or you go undrafted doesn't mean your career is done or your plans aren't going to go great. You know, there's still championship, there's League One. And, you know, it doesn't matter where you start as long as you build a career and, you know, as later on you, in your life, you earn more money. Like, that's important. And it's never bad to go abroad either. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, again, that's fantastic advice. And it's a great perspective there. I think you touched on the international players coming into the game. That's a great point of just, you know, you have to prove something in a professional game. I think, you know, the examples you there's are very good points in it. You know, it leads me to the next chapter of your career. Obviously, you know, you talk a little bit about those trials in Germany earlier, but obviously, you know, signing for the expansion side in Mexico. And, you know, what was that experience like for you of going abroad and, you know, getting different opportunities there and just, you know, learning a new lifestyle? Obviously, you know, you moved to the U.S. at such a young age, and I'm sure it was interesting, again, to adapt to, you know, a different style of life in these countries. Yeah, so for me, it was, you know, I had to kind of make a decision whether, you know, you stay without a year without a team until you get your work permit and then you go on trials again and then, you know, 
you've been without a team for like a year. So teams are like, oh, I don't know. So for me, I had to make that decision where like I, I knew I, I was good enough and I was going to make it. That was always my goal. Like I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to make it, you know. So I took that risk. I went to uh, Germany. I was with uh, SC Paderborn. Uh, at the time, they were in Bundesliga 3, but they were in first place by like 15, 20 points. So they were going to be promoted. And just going there, I was with them for a few weeks. Like, I, here I tell you, I learned how to be disciplined, but you see why the, the Germans are so good, you know? Like, there's never one player that's super flashy or way better than someone. They're all very, very good. They do the little things right, you know? So going there, I was like, dude, like, these guys still miss a pass. These guys connect every long ball. You know, we're doing finishing. The center backs are finishing just as good as the, the strikers. You're like, those little things are are the little things that I learned how to value in my game, you know, to play a short pass with the right pace, to do the little things, you know, connect every single pass, have good technique, you know. So those little things are that they valued. I took it into my game. And since then, I view things, you know, like everyone just goes for the flashy things. But, you know, when you see players do the little things right, you know, Game, game in and game out I think that's the type of players you want and that's the type of player I wanted to be you know so that helped me out just being there they invited me back to preseason because uh in the summer but I couldn't risk going there and not not getting a contract when I already have something guaranteed so you know um that's how I ended up signing in Celaya in Liga de Ascenso in Mexico which is like championship here and you know for me I, I went in with uh you know I I went in thinking like, you know what, like I'm gonna make the team, you know, it's going to be hard breaking into the first team right away. But luckily I had a great preseason, you know, I came in and preseason I had like three goals in like six, seven games. Um, So for me, like the last game, the last game of preseason, I just went in the last 10 minutes, we were down two one and I came in and scored, you know, to tie it up. And it was a brand new coach, you know, Mexico, they fire coaches left and right. So you know, I got signed by a coach. This coach came in, you know, a week or two before preseason. And, you know, I did well. I scored in those 10 minutes. And I was in the bench since the first game of the season. You know, and that team that I was with was full of, you know, it had one of the highest, you know, payrolls in Mexico. It had full of first division players that play national teams, stuff like that. So being able to be in the bench since game one, and even though I didn't make my debut to like six, seven games in, um, that for me was already an ac- accomplishment. I, I enjoyed it. I soaked everything in. And when it, when it was my time, I did it well, you know. So after that, the second season, I was a starter. And and it was good, you know. I transitioned into more of a six slash eight position. And for me, I enjoyed it, you know. And I can't – I had a great experience of it. Yeah, you know, again, a fantastic experience. It sounds like, like you say, at the end. And, you know, I'm curious, you talk about that first season, and obviously, you know, I think your mental aspect is so interesting there. You know, you talk about, obviously, you know, you continue to want to progress on your career, but you were very satisfied with just the achievement of being on the first team. But also, you know, you talk about there about pushing on in that next season and taking that opportunity. So, you know, I'm curious, what was that mental approach like of kind of acknowledging how far you've come and how well you've done, but also, you know, not being satisfied with that and wanting to push on and, you know, break into the starting 11 and, you know, become a key player like you did in that next season. Yeah, I've, I've always been very humble, you know, in that way. Like, even though I've always, you know, quote unquote, been one of the better players where I've played or gone, there's always someone there before you that you could learn from and, you know, that's been in your shoes. So for me, it's I always like to soak everything in, you know, whether you know, it's someone I'm playing against or playing with. If they have something I like that I could add to my game, I do it, you know, because you can learn something every day, you know. So for me, that was my my biggest thing the first season I was there. So in Mexico, you play six months, break six months. So it's two tournaments in one, one calendar year. So for me, it was like that first season, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in, I'm going to make the team, and I'm going to learn from all these experienced players. I'm going to learn, and, you know, once I get my chances, I'm going to go use it you know so I that's what I did you know I learned you know I learned from everyone Uh, I had great teammates and you know I just added it to my game and I think you know when you work hard and you stay honest you get rewarded you know whether it's right away or it takes time you'll get your chance and you know I did that I did well and then um you know I even had interest from 
first division Nicaxa, uh towards the end of my contract, but that's when I, I had an injury. Unfortunately, I was out for about two months. I pulled my adductor, so I was out for two months. And, you know, in these first division teams, they need players that come in, they're in rhythm, you know. So I missed out pretty much almost all the season, and I came back for playoffs, but was coming off the bench. And, you know, the GM was like, hey, like, we really like you, but, you know, we, our coach needs a six slash eight that's playing and it's in rhythm. And, you know, unfortunately you got hurt, so we're going to have to go with someone else. And that's how the sport is, you know, and you just got to accept it and keep working. Yeah, again, you know, you make a fantastic point there about the end about just accepting what that's what it thought that's what it's like. And I think, you know, it's a very difficult situation, like, like you said, of having an interest and in being able to play in a first division league in a country like Mexico, I'm sure is such a fantastic opportunity. But you know, ultimately you continue to keep pushing on in your career and you make that move back to the US and you know, are able to break in the USL championship, which is a very good level, like we touched on earlier, Las Vegas Lights. And I know it's somewhat of a brief stint there, but, you know, what was that experience, you know, finally breaking back into the U.S. and, you know, getting back into the country that, you know, you were not, you were not able to get opportunities in prior. Yeah, it was, it was, again, it goes, it was a tough experience because uh, I came in, you know, high expectations. I actually had a, I had a, an offer from a team in Paraguay, first division, supporting Luqueño. Uh, and the agent was just honest with me, like, look, you come here, you do really well, you pretty much go anywhere you want, you know. Um, but let me tell you something here, like, they have them, they take a month or two months for for them to pay you, you know. It's very unorganized in that way, so it's things you've got to be like, whoa. So, um, Lights finally offered me a contract, you know, at the time, Coach Eric Winaldo was there, and he was building a good team I think he always builds good teams so you know I was like you know what like, I'll be three hours from from where my parents live which is LA area you know I, I want to come here and prove that this is where I deserve to be so I, I, I decided to come to Vegas and unfortunately um, COVID happens you know COVID happens and it ruined everything you know um, uh, Eric Winalda ended up leaving the organization another coach came in and he was just rotating players didn't really play to like win it was just I need to play everyone equally, which, you know, it's like you're an international. You're like, yo, I'm not here for that. I'm here because I need to prove, you know, because no one's going to hand me a contract. So it was a tough experience. You know, um, we had a really, really good team where I think if Coach Winaldo would have stayed, we would have done really well. And also, you know, the whole COVID thing th threw everything away. So it, it was very tough for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's extremely difficult, and I'm sure it's happened multiple times in your career now. You've come in for you know, a coach and obviously that experience with the coach doesn't work out. So, you know, obviously your first experience in the U.S. is a difficult one, but, you know, you progress into that time with Chattanooga and you know, that's a fantastic experience for you personally in the team. You know, I think you guys had two of the most successful years in, you know, League One there in those two and those years you were there. So how was that experience for you and, you know, finally having some success in the U.S. pro game? That was probably uh, my best experience as a pro. Um not because how successful we were, but just the group and the, you know, the culture that was, that was built there. Uh, you know, I, off season, I got a call from coach Jimmy Obleda. Um, he told me like, Hey, look, you know, I'm the coach for Chattanooga. We're building something special here, you know? Um, and they told me everything, you know, their stadium's beautiful. They love soccer there. And what sold me was, the players that he told me he was bringing in and what he wanted my role to be, you know, he's like, Hey, I want you to come be my leader. I want you to, you know, be my guy. And I, you know, I could trust you that we'll do something special. And, you know, since day one, Coach Blada was honest with all, everything, you know, he, I was his guy and I wanted to prove that, you know, I could win and, and, you know, lead a team to, you know, a championship, which we felt short, but we were very consistent those two years. We know it's the semifinal and the final. And, you know, once he told me the players that were going to join him and that he had, it sold me because I played against these players or with these players growing up. He pretty much built the team of mostly California players. So going in, I already knew what every player was going to give, you know, and I knew we had the same mentality of just wanting to win no matter what and proving everyone wrong. So for me, it was, you know, I was, you know what, I'm, I was waiting for, you know, some championship teams. But I was like, you know what? you guys wanted me that bad and, you know, offering what I want, like I'm, I'm there, you know, let's, let's do it. So that's what drove me to Chattanooga. And 
yeah, it was, you know, we had one of the best locker rooms I've ever been in those two years. Um, great teammates, great players. The staff to me was amazing. Obviously there were some issues that happened with Coach Ubleda, but to me he was always great. And, you know, you know, we were short, you, you know, we were short of making the final my first year. And that year we had some great players. And I think every player that left that team went to a championship team um, because they were really good players. And then, you know, my second year we were just as good. And, you know, we made it to the final. We were a little bit unfortunate in the final, but, you know, that's how it goes. And after that, I had ch some championship, you know, decision to go back to championship or, you know, Fuego kind of called me that they wanted me to go and be that guy that was at Chattanooga for them. And I was going to be close to home. And that's why ultimately I decided to go to Fuego. Yeah, you know, good points, uh, I think, again, about your retirement at Chattanooga and just the level of players you have there. I think you make a fantastic point there. And, you know, adding in those details about just how much talent those teams had at Chattanooga and how attractive of an offer it was because of the position you kind of had. And, you know, I think you've spoken multiple times upon this about, you know, just for you, the attraction of going to teams with such talent around them. You know, you talk about your time in Mexico and then obviously your time in the USL Championship with Las Vegas Lights. So, you know, even in your time at Cal, how attractive it is to have such talented quality players around you and I think you know every player obviously wants that but that clearly seems to be you know something that's happened multiple times about upon about your career so you know how attractive it is to surround yourself with players who are you know such talented players and can help you propel your career on and you know win as much as you can yeah you know I think that that's important and you know when you have players that you know that have the same mentality as you it makes everything easier so you know, I just, I've been lucky to be in that position and especially at Chattanooga, like I'm telling you, I think that team was very special those two years and we were just unfortunate to not win a championship. Yeah, again, you know, I think you touched on it there. You guys were extremely unlucky. So, you know, the last point I kind of want to touch on here is, you know, that decision for you to go back home and, you know, be able to be in front of your family and, you know, how much that means to you to, you know, take a chapter and, you know, obviously you said you had opportunities to continue to press on in the USL championship, which is, you know, a higher level, but coming back home and getting the opportunity to play in front of your family. So how special is that to you to be so close to, you know, where it all started in your career? Yeah, it's very special, but it's also, it was also a tough one, you know, because, you know, it was like, do you want to go back to championship, which you, you always do, you know, but, you know, sometimes, you know, your contract, what you're earning and all that also plays a big part of it. And ultimately, like, besides, like, wanting to go back to championship, it played a role in, you know, how bad Fuego wanted me. And then there was another team, which was North Carolina in the league, that wanted me to come in and serve a similar role. And, you know, they pitched me the same, you know, pretty much the same, how do you say it, the same offer that, you know, Chattanooga did at the time. So I knew, I knew they were going to be really good because of what they were – you know, the last two years that they struggled, they were going younger players, but I knew they were going to be good. And, you know, Fuego was, for me, was, you know, also, a, I think I wanted to come closer to home. They, they already had a decent team. So, you know, it was tough. It was tough because, you know, North Carolina was also a great team. You know, they, great facilities, stuff like that. I had friends going there. But ultimately, I wanted to come home and, and win here. And, you know, we, we struggled. It was a tough year for the team. But other than that, you know, very happy to, you know, be close to home and, you know, have another year left in my contract. And I think this year they're building something special where, you know, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. And um, I just know this year will be a way better year for everyone that's going to be involved in that organization. Yeah, you know, again, fantastic points there. And I think that's really good insight into, you know, your decision making process and also what attracted you to, you know, Central Valley Fuego and why I think it's gonna be such a unique opportunity for you this upcoming year. And I know we're about to run out of time in this Zoom session. I'll end it right here and we can finish up the final couple of minutes or so and, and another link. So I'll send that over to you as soon as this one ends. Sounds good, bro. Thank you. So, yeah, we pretty much touched upon your, you know, your entire career up to this point. So I wanted to end this off by asking you if there's anything you wanted to add or touch upon here. No, that was about it, man. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And, you know, you know, I know you like to repost a lot of college stuff, USL stuff. And, you know, we're always here to help with whatever we can. Yeah, definitely. Really appreciate it. Obviously, I know, you know, your backgrounds and you 
USL now, but you had a really successful career in college. And, you know, I'm sure you'll inspire a lot of, you know, players in college looking to make that jump to the next level. And I think your story serves as, you know, a great pathway for a lot of internationals of, you know, obviously making the jump into the pro game and knowing that, especially in the U.S., unfortunately, with the way the system works, there just isn't going to be that much opportunity. And, you know, going abroad, you know, taking that opportunity to see if you could, you know, make it in Germany and then obviously coming back to Mexico and, you know, earning opportunities back in the U.S. through the process, I think, is a great example of they can serve for a lot of international players. So really wanted to thank you for coming on again. No, man, thanks for having me. It, it, it was a pleasure being able to talk to you and, you know, that's what we're here for. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, best of luck this upcoming season. And I'm sure that, you know, you're obviously going to have an ex extremely successful season here again in USL 1 and, you know, hopefully Central Valley Fuego and you guys can make a, a good run at the USL 1 this year. So. All right. Perfect. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.